Throughout the world, sea level rise threatens millions of homes and businesses. But in Atlantic City, the water is rising much faster than the rest of the world. But why? And what can Atlantic City do to protect itself? South Jersey reporter Brandon Golder went in search of answers. Along Atlantic City's western back bay in Scott Haynes' backyard. Watch the. We got dogs. Is an example of his resiliency anchored in this pile of broken concrete. Instead of having the cost of having it hauled away, I utilize it as my makeshift seawall. <laughs> It's the cost for having this up close view of the water. On a high tide, I could have it up to, I don't know, say basically around half, not like a quarter of the way up the shed. And it just goes right through the yard. And about three to five times a year, whether it rains or not, his street floods, forcing him to move his car to higher ground. But the flooding doesn't dampen his desire to still live here. You're still resilient, even with all this. Oh, yeah, yeah, you gotta be, you know. It is what it is. <laughs> Mother Nature, you can't change her. And yeah, she's rough, but we got a hold of it. But she is changing at a rate that could put Haynes' neighborhood underwater permanently. Because the water is rising. Climate researchers say between 1911 and 2022, Atlantic City's sea level has risen 18.2 inches. That's more than double the global average. The reason is two forces happening at once. The emissions from our cars and factories are changing our climate by trapping in the heat and making the planet warmer. That melts glaciers, causing water to rise. At the same time, Rowan University's Dr. Andrew Garner says Atlantic City's sinking. In fact, she says it's been sinking ever since the last ice age, when glaciers used to compress New Jersey's land. It's kind of like if you put a bowling ball on a mattress, under the bowling ball, the mattress is going to get squished down, but out of the edges, it gets raised up. And then when you take the bowling ball away, everything comes back to where it was. Next to Dr. Garner's desk is this color-coded yardstick, which shows by year how high the sea could rise as the climate continues to change. It kind of puts it into perspective when you can stand that right next to you and see exactly how high those sea levels uh, how much that sea level rise really looks like. The higher global emissions are, the more the sea rises. So 2100 on our low end is down here, you know, a little under three feet. Uh, for the higher end, 2100 is up here closer to four feet. According to climate maps from the nonprofit Climate Central, if Atlantic City gets three feet of sea level rise, by 2100, Scott Haynes' neighborhood, which is bathed in red, will be below tide level. Definitely, we need to be thinking about how to make our coasts more resilient. Atlantic City's trying to do just that. Jacques Howard is Atlantic City's Director of Planning and Development. But the fact is that we are built, uh, and we are um, the economic engine, quite frankly, of South Jersey. Um, most people know that. Um, and so consequently, we do need to be resilient. But resiliency is costly. A hundred million dollars is being spent on infrastructure projects throughout the city to mitigate the effects of sea level rise and storm surge. Those projects include this seawall, which rings the northern border of the island to protect neighborhoods from higher storm surges, and a new pump station to replace this one facing the back bay. It's old. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's old. That's uh, it, it's it has seen its uh, its useful days. I mean, it. it I say, how old is this uh, station? Uh, A couple it, decades? Yeah, it, it, early 1900s. Uzo Aherakwe is Atlantic City's city engineer. He says sea level rise is preventing rainwater from more effectively flowing out of the city's underground storm drains. When the ocean rises, it's hard for water to flow out. And because it's hard for water to flow out, um, the runoff backs up. When it backs up, it can't collect more water. You start having ponding. A Ahiroquois says the new station will have bigger pumps to push out stormwater into the back bay. These projects are expected to defend Atlantic City from storm surge and sea level rise through the end of the century. The city is also pursuing federal and state funding to give homeowners money to raise up their homes.
But until the city gets that money, many homes in Atlantic City, including in Scott Haynes' neighborhood, remain vulnerable to flooding. I hope I'm not around. <laughs> I'll be gone. So I'm not worried. <laughs> but his children and his eventual grandchildren will be around and will have to live with a higher sea level unless, Professor Garner says, efforts are made to reduce global emissions. It's easy to feel overwhelmed and kind of depressed about it, but I think there's a lot of hope. We very clearly see more manageable amounts of sea level rise if we work towards really cutting our emissions now. Adapting to sea level rise while resolving to cut global emissions. Brandon Goldner, CBS News, Philadelphia.